Anthony lives in the south of town, 20 minutes away from college. Mark's house is in the north and a bit closer, just 10 minutes away. Their lectures start at the same time, and the guys always meet in the park on the way to their classes. Who's usually further from the college building when it happens? The boys meet at the same point. It means they're the same distance away from the college building. Milan Airport Customs officers noticed that one man traveled abroad at least several times a week. They started to suspect he was a smuggler, but couldn't understand what he smuggled. He always had a suitcase or a bag with him, but there never was anything forbidden or expensive inside. Only several months later, when a new customs officer joined the team, the mystery was solved. What was it the man smuggled? He smuggled designer suitcases and bags. Detective Dan Carlos was following a criminal who had stolen his watch. This person, Dan didn't see whether it was a man or a woman, ran for a hospital building and disappeared inside. When the detective rushed through the doors, he saw two doctors examining their patients. One of them had to be the criminal he was looking for. But which one? It's the woman on the left. Her stethoscope earpieces aren't in her ears. Emily had passed a difficult test with flying colors. But for some inexplicable reason, her professor's sure the girl cheated. After arguing for a while, they come to an agreement. If Emily solves one riddle her teacher will give her, she'll get to keep her high mark. On the piece of paper the professor hands her, there's just one word. House. The girl doesn't need much time to figure out the answer. What is it? In this case, the color matters. The answer is greenhouse. Little Adam knew his older brother Philip got some money for his birthday. But however hard Adam tried, he couldn't find it. One day, when Philip was away, the boy sneaked into his brother's room. There was no money, but Adam found a map. The older boy had hidden the cash in the garden. Adam followed the instructions to a T. 10 steps to the left, 15 to the right, then 8 straight ahead. It must be here. The boy started to dig. He wasted 2 hours and still found nothing. Did Philip trick his little brother? Adam's steps were much smaller than his brother's. That's why he was digging in the wrong place. Level 2 It was the middle of a working day, and Helen was in her office. Suddenly, her home security system informed her there was someone inside. The woman called the police. She was sure the intruder had been sent by her competitors. She thought he was after the memory card with the information about her new project. When the police arrived, there was indeed a man in the house. They searched him but found no memory card. He couldn't have swallowed it. Then where was the card? When the police got him, the man secretly slipped the memory card into one officer's pocket. After being searched, the criminal retrieved the card. The manager of a ski resort has gone missing. The police suspect three people that are staying at the hotel. Unfortunately, no one can find any of these people. They're probably on the slope skiing. The police officers have no time to waste and decide to examine their rooms. Look at the suspect's stuff and say who is behind the disappearance of the manager. It's Joe. He's the only one who doesn't have warm clothes or winter sports gear and equipment. It means he didn't come to the resort to have some fun. 
Jason, a rich traveler, stayed in a small but expensive hotel at the seaside. During a severe storm with gale-force winds, there was a blackout. The whole area was plunged into darkness. People stayed without electricity for at least two hours. The problem was finally solved. But Jason discovered that during the commotion, someone had taken his wallet with tons of cash and all his credit cards. The police arrived and questioned the people who had been in the hotel at that time. Justin, the receptionist, told the detective he had been in the basement. He had been trying to start an emergency generator. Unfortunately, he didn't succeed. Nicole, another guest, said she arrived an hour before the blackout. She was exhausted. She lit several candles, unpacked, cleaned herself, and went to bed. Gregory, the hotel driver, said he had been at the airport. A new guest had arrived, and he went to pick him up. The police immediately figured out who was lying. Can you? The blackout was caused by a bad storm, and planes don't fly in such windy weather. Then how could someone arrive by airplane? Gregory lied. In the 22nd century, robots live among people, and it's nothing out of the ordinary. But sometimes, they resemble people so much, it makes detective work way harder. Like this time. Eric Blank, an experienced police officer, has to figure out which of the three suspects is guilty of identity theft. He knows for sure the culprit is a robot. But who isn't human? It's the girl in the middle. She has a USB port on the side of her neck. Level 3 Maria had to take part in a very important sports competition. But several days before the event, her boyfriend, Keith, found out the girl had disappeared. The only thing she left behind was a note. I'm sorry, I had to leave. We'll never see each other again. Please call my sister Jenny. Her phone number is 2121. 736362. Confused by the message, Keith went to the police. I think Maria was taken away against her will and made to write this note. She is an only child in the family and doesn't have a sister. The police started an investigation. They found three people who could be behind the disappearance. Cheryl, Maria's competitor, said she had been at her mom's house, resting before the competition. Aaron, Cheryl's coach, told the police he'd been spending all his time at the gym. And Kyle, Maria's coach, said he had felt unwell and stayed in bed. Who knows something about Maria's whereabouts? In her note, the girl didn't write a phone number. This way, she encoded the criminal's name, Aaron. Boy, who needs a coach like that? Janet had a dream. She wanted to become her professor's assistant. The man was a famous and talented scientist. The man knew she was a smart girl. But before offering her the position, he decided to put her to the test. The professor took her to a house with two rooms, completely isolated from each other. In one room, there were three switches. In the other room, there were three light bulbs. Janet had to stay in the room with the switches. She was allowed to go to the other room only once. She had to understand which switch was connected to each of the bulbs. The girl managed to solve this task. How did she do it? She turned on the first switch and waited for a minute. Then she turned it off. After that, she flipped the second switch and went inside the room with the bulbs. One of the bulbs was on. It was the one connected to the second switch. Janet touched the remaining bulbs. The warm one was connected to the first switch, and the cold one was linked to the third switch. Kyle lived on the sixth floor of an apartment building. Once, the man was having his coffee on the balcony. Suddenly, he spotted a woman on the eighth floor of the building opposite his. She opened the window and threw something with a great force. In no more than a minute, Kyle jumped to his feet and ran to call the ambulance. They arrived soon and rushed the woman to a hospital. 
What did she throw out of the window? It was a boomerang. Hey, I didn't say all these people were smart. Do you feel like cracking another Rebus puzzle? This time, a more difficult one? Take a look at this. What does it mean? Safety in numbers. <laughs> right before a restaurant was about to open, someone stole all the money from the office. A detective arrived for interrogation. A cook said that he was working hard and didn't have time to walk or gaze around, so he didn't see anything. The security guy said that he was in the bathroom and didn't steal anything. The waiter said he remembered seeing one visitor heading to the office. Somehow, he ignored it and didn't stop them. The waiter got arrested for stealing the money. Why? The restaurant was yet closed, and there couldn't be any visitors. Kennedy woke up in some dungeon. She tried to escape, but the door was locked. All of a sudden, a clock appeared and started ticking. It said that there would be an explosion in half a minute if she didn't crack the code. It was just one number, but the trick was that Kennedy only had two attempts. Luckily, there was a hint. Kennedy tried 60, but it didn't work. What must be her second guess? Remember the clock? When an hour hand points at 1, it means 5 minutes. When it points at 2, 10 minutes and so on. So 12 equals 0. One rainy evening, Poppy drove to her boyfriend's neighborhood to return his hoodie. She walked in the house for a couple of minutes and forgot to lock the car. When she returned, she called the police because her laptop had been stolen from the back seat. The detective said that the girl had lied. Why? Poppy has a two-door car. There's no back seat in her automobile. Ms. Brown, Ms. White, and Mr. Green are best friends who met up at a restaurant to celebrate their college graduation. Ms. White suddenly noticed one fun fact and said, Look, we're all wearing our colors, but no one wears their color. Yeah, Virginia White, you're right, responded the girl in a green dress. Can you tell who is who? So, Ms. White can only be wearing a green or a brown dress. Since a girl in a green dress responded to her, Virginia White is wearing a brown dress. This leaves us with the fact that the girl in the green dress must be Ms. Brown, and the girl in the white dress must be Ms. Green. Madeline wanted to make her dad the best present for his birthday. The problem was that she had zero ideas. She decided to sneak into her dad's computer and see what he has saved in his online shopping cart. The computer required a password, and Madeline didn't know it. Can you help her figure it out? Look at the desk. There's a note, and it has quite a lot of typos. It could be done on purpose. Find every typo and put them together. O in laundry, extra L in school, I in clean, C in basement, and V in answer. So the password is O-L-I-C-V. Ned works in a club, and his job is to check people's IDs and to not let any suspicious people in. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who wasn't supposed to enter the club. So, here's the first one. She seems fine, let her in. What do you say about this girl? Don't let her in. The month and date are flipped. She must have a fake ID. Bye, girl. Okay, next. Look, in or out? Look, the guy in the photo has a tattoo on his neck, but in reality, he doesn't have one. That's suspicious. Don't let him in. Okay, here's the next guest. He seems fine to me. 
And this girl? She seems alright, green light. Okay, another one, in or out. Look, there's a typo in birth. Official documents don't have any typos, so this ID must be fake. I wouldn't let her in. Melody and Belle are sisters. Melody has cool clothes, and Belle always borrows something from her without permission. One day, Melody was going to a party and couldn't find her favorite top. She knocked on her sister's door. Belle opened the door, but saw it was her sister and shut it. In a couple of seconds, Melody broke into the room and started searching for the top. But she didn't find it anywhere and had to leave. On her way out, she remembered something and managed to find it. Where? Melody remembered that when Belle opened the door, she had her hoodie unzipped. After she shut the door, Belle zipped it. She was wearing the top. Atlas was wandering in a forest and came across a huge mansion. He walked in, and the doors behind him got locked. There were three ways out. Behind the first door, there was a room with poisonous gas that made your skin melt. Behind the second door, there was a hungry wolf. Behind the third door, there was a window, but there was no ladder. How can Atlas escape safely? He should pick the third door. He just walked in, so he's on the first floor. He won't need a ladder to get out of the window safely. Mr. Mason didn't really like a huge tree growing by his neighbor's house because it hid the sun. He was super happy when the tree was no more one day after a raging storm at night. Still, his neighbor called the police and reported Mr. Mason for cutting the tree on purpose. Mr. Mason denied doing it. Who is right? If it were the storm that broke the tree, the cut would be messy. But the tree is perfectly sawn off. So, it's some person's work. Maybe not Mr. Mason, but definitely not the storm. Mrs. Riviera is a math teacher. She collected her students' homework, made them do a computer test, and started to grade the assignments during the class. She came across two very similar homework sheets and realized that one of the students copied the work of the other. Here are the students, Asher and Holden. Can you tell which one of them is the copycat? It's Asher. His hands are covered in fresh ink, which means he probably just did his homework right before the class. Mr. Reed came back home at night after another long shift. His wife was still up. He kissed her and went to bed. Mrs. Reed had been suspecting that her husband was cheating on her for a while already, and this time she wanted to know for sure. She decided to check his pockets. The next day, she told her husband that she knew he was cheating on her. Why? Look, there is a pair of keys in his pocket. His keys are hanging on the wall. So these are the keys from someone else's house. Ashley had a birthday party, and she invited some friends over. Liliana didn't want to go, so she lied that her mom grounded her and made her clean the room. Ashley was sad but understanding about it. To make it up to her, the next day, Liliana invited Ashley to her house to study together and to watch a movie in the evening. Ashley agreed, but at Liliana's house, she understood that she had lied to her. How? Liliana's room is still messy. If she had cleaned it the previous day, it'd be neat. A famous rich writer was living alone in a mansion and never went outside. The only people she ever saw were her cook, her gardener, and a cleaning man. One morning, before breakfast, the cleaning man found her poisoned in her room and called the police. The three of them were suspects. The cook was watching a cooking blog on YouTube. The cleaning man said he just came to start the job when he found the lady. The gardener was in the garden planting some flowers. Who poisoned the lady? (laughs) 
It must be the cook. It happened right before breakfast, but he wasn't cooking anything. He knew the breakfast wouldn't be needed that morning. It was summer break, and Ariana's friends invited her to go camping. Ariana wasn't really into camping, but didn't want to admit that she'd rather stay at home and watch TV. So, she said that her parents invited her to go to Greece. In reality, she stayed at home and was binge-watching TV shows. Her family sent her a vacation photo. Ariana photoshopped herself there and sent it to her friends. When her friends saw the picture, they realized that Ariana wasn't in Greece. How? Ariana photoshopped herself, but her friends noticed that everyone in the picture except for her cast a shadow. Kelly works at a gas station in a city suburb. It was calm and quiet there. One day, she only had three customers. The first one got something to drink. The second one got some chocolate bars. And the third one just paid for gas. One of them was a criminal, and Hallie reported him to the police. Who is the criminal, and how did she understand it? The second man paid with a $25 bill. Such a bill doesn't exist, which means he'd been printing money. It was September 17th, and Annika was finally going to Spain for her vacation. She was living alone, so she sent all of her plants and her cat to her friend's house. On September 27th, she came back home. When she walked in, she realized that someone was in her house while she was away. How did Annika understand it? Annika lived alone, but look, there's a tear-off calendar hanging on the wall. When she left, it was September 17th, but now it shows September 27th. This story happened a couple of centuries ago. Henry and Caroline were dating, but their families were against it. One day, Caroline's family decided to take her away to another city, but they didn't tell her which one. Henry and Caroline knew it was one of the two big cities nearby. Paris, which was on the left, or Berlin on the right. They agreed that Caroline would throw her scarf away when the train took off, and Henry would find her wherever she was. So here's where Henry found the scarf. Which way did the train go? If you throw something from a moving train, it flies in the opposite direction. Henry found the scarf on the right part of the train station, which means the train headed left to Paris. Spoiler! A couple of months later, he found Caroline there, and they lived happily ever after. And how fast will you find the answer to this riddle? It equals 4. Cat equals 6. Time equals 8. Hippo equals 10. Cheetah equals... The answer is 14. Each letter equals 2. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet! There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping, Rachel was reading a book on her phone, and Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. Before she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they cover her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. What usually happens with plants in math classrooms? They grow square roots! A man walked into a room and saw three doors. The first one had a sign which read, To the swamps. On the second door, there was a note, Lion's Den. 
The third door didn't have any sign, but the man knew for sure where it led. How? It was the door he had entered through. A baby giraffe doubled in height every month till it reached its dad's size. It took 10 months. How many months did it take the baby giraffe to grow half its current height? Nine months. Now, have a look at these two guys. What do you think? Who will not survive? Most likely the guy on the left. His slingshot sure can cause some harm to the guy on the right, but he'll definitely survive. But should he step off the wooden board, the other guy will immediately fall into an abyss. A rich man, Mr. Thomas Green, disappeared right from his home. The detective assigned to this case found a note at the crime scene. It read, 1st of January, 4th of October, 5th of March, 3rd of June. The detective guessed that the criminal's name was hidden in the note. The suspects were Jack Green, the rich man's son and heir, June Green, the man's wife, and John Jacobson, Mr. Green's employee. The detective deduced the name of the culprit in no time. Can you do the same? These dates supposedly stand for the letters you need in the words. For example, means the first letter of the word January, J, and so on. It turns out John Jacobson has something to do with Mr. Green's disappearance. Try to crack this one. Pot, o o o o o o o o. That's pot eight o's, which is potatoes. One end, three end, five end, seven end. This rebus hides odds and ends. Knee friended, what can it mean? It's a friend in need. A student put his final exam paper into the pile of other students' papers. The professor told him, I saw you were cheating on the exam. You'll get an automatic fail. Strangely, the student just walked away. When the exam scores were announced, he found out he had an A. How come? The professor didn't know who the student was. That's why he graded his paper just like anyone else's. You're playing table tennis when your ball falls into a one-foot deep narrow metal pipe sticking out of the concrete floor. How can you get the ball out of the pipe if all you have is your tennis paddle, a plastic bottle filled with water, and your shoelaces? Pour the water from your bottle into the hole and the ball will rise to the surface. You have an equation made of matchsticks. 6 plus 4 equals 4. Move just one matchstick to make it true. You need to take one matchstick from the plus sign and add it to the 6 so it makes 8. Then you'll have 8 minus 4 equals 4. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now they have two options. Take a high-speed train for 100 bucks to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option, look at the clock on the wall, it's 9.55 a.m. 
the boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take the high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow, how did she get through security? When it was finally time to board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate, but it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. The glamorous lady began to chat with Kim and Ashley. She told them she had recently visited an exotic island with her friends. Then she showed the girls some pictures. When the lady went to the bathroom, Ashley whispered to Kim, This woman is a liar. She photoshopped this picture. How did Ashley know that? It's all about the shadows. They all look natural, except for this one. The glamorous lady took a sip of her juice and started coughing. Suddenly, she fainted and fell into the billionaire's arms. He was ready to shout for help, but Kim stopped him, saying the woman was faking it. How did she know that? Look at the content of her bag. It's full of the billionaire's pictures and magazine articles. She also has a tattoo with his portrait on her leg. This woman is obsessed with him. It was lunchtime, and the billionaire offered Kim to play a game. There were three boxes. One of them contained a meal. There was a statement on each box, but only one of them was true. Can you help him figure out which box has food inside? If the food is in the first box, there are two true statements. And if the food is in the third box, there are also two true statements. But we need just one true statement. That's why the food can only be in the second box. Kim opened the box. She saw a delicious meal and a bank card. The billionaire said, congratulations, you've won $5 million. Enjoy your trip. Kim and Ashley landed in Rome and went to get their luggage. It turned out that Ashley had had the same suitcase as two other passengers, and they had a little quarrel. Can you help distribute the three suitcases among these people? The first suitcase belongs to this woman. It's covered in her dog's hair. The second suitcase has some traces of a star sticker. You've probably noticed it before on Ashley's bag. And the third suitcase belongs to this man. Since Kim and Ashley were now very rich, they decided to find a real estate agent who could help them rent a luxurious villa. They wanted to spend their vacation there. The agent showed them three houses. Can you help the girls choose the best one? There are cockroaches in the first house. Mm, They won't make very pleasant neighbors. The second house is too old. There's a crack in the wall, which doesn't look safe. And the third house looks pretty good. As for the pool, it can be easily cleaned. Yes! Kim and Ashley left the villa and went sightseeing. When they returned, they found out that someone had stolen their passports from the safe. The girls called the police, and they interrogated three suspects. The chef was too busy making dinner for Kim and Ashley. The cleaner was dealing with the pool all day, and the gardener said he had been outside planting flowers. He didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The gardener. If he planted the flowers, where are they? The police returned Kim and Ashley their passports and arrested the gardener. The next day, the girls went shopping. Sellers wanted to take advantage of rich and naive tourists and offered them overpriced souvenirs. 
Only one of these three items is a good deal. Oh. Can you guess which one? Take a look at this Venetian mask. It says made in China, which means that this mask can't be real. This magnet is of very low quality. The word Italy is spelled with an error. It simply can't cost $100. This blue cheese doesn't look fresh, but it's normal for this kind of product. This delicacy is the only thing that Kim and Ashley can buy here for a fair price. Tom bought a sandwich, left it on a table, and went to the bathroom to wash his hands. When he came back, he saw three people standing by his table. And the sandwich was gone. Can you guess who ate Tom's food? This guy over there, he left some crumbs. Tom decided to take a bus to get to the lab in time, but as soon as he took a seat, Tom noticed a vampire among the passengers. Can you see the vampire too? This woman over there, she's wearing an oversized hoodie to hide her sensitive skin from sunlight. It doesn't necessarily mean that she's a vampire, but the absence of any shadow is 100% proof. When Tom tried to pay for his bus ticket, he realized he had left his wallet at the coffee shop. Luckily, the driver said, I won't call the police if you can solve my riddle. Tom agreed to this deal and listened to the riddle attentively. I make loud sounds when I change. After I change, I get bigger, but way less. What am I? Have you guessed? It's popcorn. Tom came back to the coffee shop to get his wallet back. Josh, the barista, claimed that he hadn't seen any wallets. Shelly, the owner, said that she had recently seen a suspicious customer with two wallets. And Bill, the customer with two wallets, said that the second wallet belonged to his wife. Who's lying? The barista. Take a look at his feet. He's standing on Tom's wallet. Shelly and Josh didn't want to involve the police, and Tom suggested playing a game. He told the barista, I won't call the police if you solve my riddle. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What is it? Unfortunately, the barista couldn't figure out the right answer and went to jail. The correct answer is footsteps. Tom was running out of time and decided to get to the lab by taxi. But his application went crazy and sent Tom this weird maze. The instructions said, if you want to know the numbers on the license plate of your taxi, solve this riddle. Can you help Tom? If we go through this maze from start to finish, we'll get to 517. Tom found his taxi and hit the road. The driver stopped in the middle of nowhere and took out a weird gadget. He opened a portal that transported Tom to the top of a mountain. There, he met his own evil twin from a parallel universe, and this twin <laughs> wanted the box. Tom started running and fell into an ice cave with three tunnels. There was a hungry cougar inside the first tunnel. The second tunnel was full of bats that fed on human blood. And a dozen evil wizards were waiting for Tom inside the third tunnel. Which way should he choose? The second one, the bats are sleeping because it's daytime. Tom reached a little village in the woods and hid in a cabin. But then, he noticed something very creepy and ran away from that village immediately. What did he see? This glove over there is not actually a glove. This cabin probably belongs to zombies, not people. Tom found some road, stopped a truck, and asked the driver to take him to the nearest airport. But the man asked Tom to solve a riddle first. I am known to bring bad luck when you see me in the dark, but I don't like the rain. But one thing's for sure, you won't hear me bark. What am I? What should Tom answer to get a ride? A black cat. At the airport, Tom tried to buy a plane ticket back to New York. But he didn't have any money. Suddenly, Lily, a famous blogger and influencer, invited Tom into the business class lounge. 
She was celebrating her birthday with her friends. Unfortunately, their magic knife could only make three cuts. They couldn't figure out how to split the cake into eight pieces. Can you? First, they should cut the cake in half. Then they can make another cut so that there are four equal pieces. Now they need to cut the cake sideways through the middle so that it has two layers. Now everybody has a piece except for Tom. But Lily gave him a more generous gift. She bought the guy a ticket to New York. Finally, Tom brought the mysterious box to the abandoned lab. He noticed a metal door and tried to open it. But the door was locked. A red sign appeared on a little screen next to the door. It asked for a password. There was a hint on the wall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can you help Tom crack the code? There are 17 spaces. After reading the number out loud, you'll get it. Type number 2, then number 4, three times. Number 6, five times. And after that, seven eights. Voila! The light changed to green, and Tom entered the room. Mrs. Cooper was going to the bank when she passed out. Cece was passing by when she noticed the woman on the ground. She called the ambulance and the police. Soon, the woman came to her senses. But she found out that someone had stolen all her money. There were three suspects, Cece and two other pedestrians, Teo and Mason. Who is the thief? Look, there are two types of footsteps leading to the place where Mrs. Cooper is lying. One of them belongs to her, and the other was left by Cece. There are also two parallel straight lines, which must be the prints left by a wheelchair. So, the thief must be the man in the wheelchair, Mason. Mrs. Ford reported to the police that her neighbor, Anthony, had stolen her golden figurine. She said, I was upstairs vacuum cleaning when I heard someone enter the house. I walked up to the window and saw my neighbor leaving the house a half minute later. When I went downstairs, I saw that my golden figurine had been stolen. Anthony denied passing by Mrs. Ford's house that day. Who should the detective believe? He should believe Anthony. Vacuum cleaners are noisy, so Mrs. Ford couldn't possibly hear anyone enter her house. Cheryl was having a birthday party. She noticed that her brother was staying in his room with some girl, but she didn't know who it was. Cheryl got curious, so after they left, she sneaked into his room to look for some hints. There were three girls at the party, Jasmine, Willow, and Sylvia. Cheryl immediately guessed who her brother was dating. Can you figure it out? It's Sylvia. Look, there's a jacket in the room. Sylvia was wearing it at the party. Now I'll show you some pictures, and you'll need to understand what's wrong with them. Let's go! Here's the first one. The door hinges and the handle are on the same side of the door. Doors don't work this way. Here's another one. What's wrong here? The woman isn't wearing a necklace, but it's reflected in the mirror. And what about this one? Nine and eleven are messed up. It should be the other way around. Ah, this one should be easy, but keep your eyes wide open. Right, there's no red traffic light. Paris went on an expedition to a desert for a month. She didn't have a strong internet connection, so she couldn't talk to her boyfriend often. Still, one day, she managed to video call him. But that call didn't end well. The girl broke up with a guy. Why? Look at the background. It's nighttime for Paris's boyfriend, but he is obviously having dinner with some girl. There's a second plate and a glass with a lipstick print on it. Storm was walking with his friend in the park. Suddenly, it started raining and they had to go home. Storm ran back as fast as he could because he didn't have a raincoat, an umbrella, or even a hood. 
Still, when he finally got home after running in the rain for 10 minutes, not a single hair on his head was wet. How is it possible? Storm was bald. In an alternate reality, Mrs. Savad was trying to persuade her daughter Amy to go to a party. Amy wanted to do her homework instead. Weird, huh? Mrs. Savad bought Amy an amazing dress, but the girl still refused. It continued until her mom promised that if Amy went to that party, she'd let her do her homework 16 hours a day every day for another month. Later, Mrs. Savad left for her own party. When she returned, she realized that Amy hadn't left the house. How did she know? There's still a price tag on the dress, which means that Amy didn't wear it. Violet had a genius but crazy sister who was always making traps in the basement. One day, Violet went downstairs to get her laundry. As soon as she walked in, the door got locked and wouldn't open. There were three buttons. Violet knew that one of them would open the door, but the other two would electrocute her. Luckily, her sister had mercy. There was a hint. Which of the buttons will let Violet get out of the basement? If you put the letters in the right order, you'll see purple button written there. That's the one. Mrs. West came to the police station asking to check on her husband. She said that he was in his office when she called him. Suddenly, she heard her husband fall to the floor. And about 10 seconds later, he hung up without saying anything. She called him again, then she came to his office, but he didn't open the door. The detective arrived at the office and found Mr. West unconscious. The detective was sure that the man wasn't alone in the room when it all happened. Why? someone had to hang up the phone. If the man had suddenly fainted, the phone would have fallen on the floor. You work in a baggage storage room at the airport. Three people come and give you their bags at the same time. Now, you don't remember who each bag belongs to. Take a look inside and try to figure it out. There's just one girl, so the bag with a dress inside probably belongs to her. The blind man doesn't need this mirror, which means that this bag must belong to the bald man. And the bald man doesn't need a hairbrush, so the third bag must belong to the blind man. After lunch, Mike headed for the next room, but before the guy got inside, he had to solve a riddle to open the door. Some will use me, others will not. Some remember me, others forget. I can't be picked up off the ground or tossed into the sea. You can only gain me with time. What am I? The correct answer is knowledge. Mike entered a beautiful party hall filled with people in costumes and masks. The voice told Mike to go find one ghost, one zombie, and one thief among these people. Look at this crowd very attentively. Can you see them? The guy over there doesn't seem to have legs, and he's levitating. He must be a ghost. Look at this woman's food. Only zombies would eat that. And the woman over there is the thief. Her diamond ring doesn't fit her finger. Also, the ring is very similar to this lady's jewelry set. Mike tried to open the next door and receive a new question immediately. I look flat, but I'm deep. Hidden realms I shelter. Lives I take, but food I offer. At times, I am beautiful. I can be calm, angry, and turbulent. I have no heart, but I offer pleasure and freedom. No man can own me, yet I encompass what all men must have. What am I? Mike solved this riddle and entered the next room. Have you figured out the answer too? The correct answer is, I'm the ocean. Mike saw the next door, but whatever he did, he couldn't open it. He spotted an electronic lock on the door and a map of a maze on the wall. The voice said that Mike must solve the riddle to open the door. Can you help?
If you go through the maze from start to finish, you'll get 6251. This is the code. When Mike finally entered the room, he saw a locked safe. The voice said that Mike's task was to open the safe. What buttons should he press? The puzzles present three colors, pink, white, and brown. Mike pressed the correct buttons and unlocked the safe, but he only found one small coin inside. The next room was empty, except for an old vending machine in the corner. Mike came closer and noticed a small key inside the machine. Suddenly, the walls began to move. The room was getting smaller and smaller. The voice told Mike to be careful because the vending machine was broken. Some wires were torn and mixed up. Which button should Mike press to get the key out and get out of the room before it's too late? Mike should use the coin from the previous challenge and press the fourth button. Then the voice asked Mike to find the odd image in this pattern. Can you help the guy? The couple over there is different. In another room, Mike met a nice elderly lady, Miss Jason. She was very upset because someone had broken into her apartment. Mike's task was to find the robber. He inspected the crime scene and questioned three witnesses. The cleaning lady, Sarah, said that she'd finished her work at 11 p.m. and left. Billy, a passerby, said that he'd seen a suspicious man in a mask in Miss Jason's window. Kelly, the neighbor, was visiting her boyfriend in another city. Who's lying? Billy, he's a passerby and just met Miss Jason. Then how come he knows which window is hers? It got very dark outside, but Mike's weird quest continued. He entered a jewelry store and its owner explained the guy his next task. Someone had broken into the store and taken the most expensive diamond jewelry. But luckily, the robber left their fingerprints on the shards of broken glass. There are three suspects, a werewolf, an elf, and a zombie. Can you help Mike find the real robber? It was the elf. He's the only creature among them with human-like fingerprints. Another door led Mike into a creepy lab. There, he saw a mad scientist playing a strange game with his patients. He asked them to choose between two pills. One of them was a harmless capsule with vitamins, while the other one was a sleeping pill. Somehow, the scientist managed to get the harmless pill every time he played this game, and his opponents always fell asleep. How was this possible? And what should Mike do to pass this test? Both pills were actually harmless. The scientist added a special substance to the glasses of water he offered his patients to wash down the pills. So, to stay awake, Mike should switch the glasses or simply refuse to drink any water.